Good morning and a happy Friday, everyone. I'm recording this video to celebrate five years of sobriety. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't. I used to drink and do other things quite a lot uh, to a point of excess because I was a very depressed, broken human being and um, I wanted an out an out, an escapism from the monotony of life, from the things that hurt me, the people that hurt me, my brain that was hurting me at the time. Uh, and I used to drown my sorrows in everything that I could come across. Five years ago, after multiple attempts to stop my life, shall we call it, for the sake of being removed from the internet, uh, I realised that life is actually worth living. And it was because of my daughter. Um, she's the reason I'm alive now. She's the reason why I'll live to the ripe old age of whenever I can fucking get to. And she's the reason why I'm a better person every single day I fucking exist. <clears throat> I'm five years sober today. And I don't expect anyone to run around patting me on the back. I've patted myself on the back enough. I'm fucking proud of myself for getting here. And it wasn't an easy journey. The first couple of months felt like a couple of years worth of suffering through withdrawal, through shakes, through fucking mental confusion, through everything, through not being able to see any friends. I'd cut everyone out of my life, basically, because I knew that no one really could understand the journey that I was having to go on because no one was in the same situation as me, not in my friendship group. I decided five years ago that I wanted to be alive for longer and I didn't want to be that sad fucking lonely guy in the corner of a pub or sat at some fucking table at a party who's just knocking them back, bosh, 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 and then doing a load of other naughty things to keep himself active throughout the whole night, maybe 48 hours, 72 hour fucking binge, whatever it might be. I'm better now. Now I fucking... I decide to fill my spirit and soul with good stuff. I decide to, to fill my day with, with productive results that I can actually say, hey, look what we've done today. Look what's been achieved today. Rather than just waking up the following day and thinking, oh, fuck me. Oh, God, I need a fucking can of Coke and a fag. That's all gone now. Five years of sobriety has given me ultimate clarity in my head. It's taken a long, long time to get here, but I'm here now. And I think the most challenging thing is that I did this relatively easy for me, but I know it's not easy for other people. I know, I know that there's other people out there who probably were in or are in the same situation that I was in um, and they can't get out and they don't know how to stop. They don't know how to cut the fucking demon out of their brain. Well, I'll give you my uh, tactics that I use to help me. OK, one, remember, you're better than that. You know, getting on a massive fucking session. Oh, I drank seven bottles of wine last night. I did four grams. <sighs> Congratulations, you fucking loser. OK, two is, do you really want to wake up feeling as fucking hollow as you do after a big fucking session? You know, that, that fucking whole day of just laying on the sofa watching stuff. Oh, I feel bad for myself. Ugh. Fucking grow up. Just deal with it, all right? Sort your life out. Three. I've, I've gone wrong. I've gone wrong. I'm, I'm not... I was going to cut it there and then redo another video. Look, it, I don't need to. I'm not some fucking YouTuber who needs to actually make sure that things are cut right and da la 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 If you're listening to this, listen. If not, fuck off. And before you ask, I'm a registered cannabis patient, so shut the fuck up. What got me through it was being better, not wanting to wake up and feel like shit, not wanting to be hollow all day. Also, cutting out the people who were a bad influence for me was a real big thing. That helped me a lot because it basically signaled to people that I'm not going to be a part of the same journey that we've been on for the past 20 years worth of debauchery. Um, I have more to live for and more to do with my life. Um, that's not an arrogant thing. It's just me wanting to actually exist for a purpose rather than just existing. To stop myself from thinking about drinking, nice little rhyme there, I decided to have a fork 
pretty close by my, my, my side at all times, which sounds very fucking peculiar, okay? But the fork was there for a purpose. The fork was there that whenever I had an impure thought about getting on the sesh, drinking a load of booze, hurting myself, doing a load of drugs, something like that, I would take said fork, this is a pen, not a fork, I'm just showing for example, and I would, bam, jab myself in the thigh with it. Not enough to actually stab myself like I'm a delicious piece of beef, just enough to make me go, oh, fuck. And eventually, I can tell you, after stabbing yourself in the leg with a fork over and over again, whenever you had that bad feeling, sooner or later, your brain goes, hang on, if you think that way, you're going to get a painful leg. Don't do that. I don't know if there's some kind of psychological or technical way of describing exactly what I was doing to myself and some kind of Pavlovian derivative to make sure that I was safe, but it fucking worked. But after about two months, didn't need to stab myself in the leg anymore. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and self-harm. Don't self-harm. I've been there too. Didn't really help. That alongside the drinking, all of that stuff, didn't really help. Not that I'm there, sat there with a thigh full of fucking cut marks or an arm full of cut marks. No, 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 no. My self-harm was more headbutting a wall until I passed out or punching something till my knuckles ruptured and they were broken. That was my self-harm. It was stupid. Um, drinking and drugs was the other self-harm. It was just constant punishment because I didn't feel right. I didn't feel like I was me. I didn't know who I was or who I wanted to be or why I wanted to exist. So, five years down the line, very, very happy with myself, very proud of myself. And, you know, I grew up in the era of jackass when I was a teenager. And I remember all those boys, and I never knew they were on the, on the fucking everything back then. But Steve-O really stood out to me out of one of them. You know, I remember going to see Steve-O live, or, you know, I had all his DVDs, everything like that. And then when I found out that he was a recovering addict or he had problems... I remember watching his journey of sobriety and thinking, ah, loser, you had to stop doing it. But when I started sobering up, when I actually got serious about it, I went back to watch these videos of Steve-O talking about his recovery and how hard it was and everything. And I realised I was on a very, very similar journey to him. Um, he went through some shit. I went through some shit. It was all self-inflicted shit, dumb shit. But, you know, we needed people around us to actually snap us out of that. Now, sadly, I didn't have, you know, Knoxville and the boys to actually take me and drag me off to some kind of fucking rehab and tell me I need to sort my life out. I had to do it myself, which is irrelevant in this conversation. It's just a case of whether you've got people around you or not, make sure they're the right people who actually care about you and who want you better not just want the fun guy at the party, okay? I had a lot of the people around me who wanted Mr. Fun at a party. Um, Mr. Fun doesn't last that fucking long, all right? Be you instead of being some kind of manifestation of a personality that you think you can actually relate to more than the real you. You've got to figure out who you are, what makes you fucking tick. I walk around this world seeing lots and lots of people who don't actually know who they are and what makes them tick. And actually what their demons are. They haven't met them yet. I met my demons a long time ago. I met them. I was scared of them for a long time. And then I decided to stand up and shout in their face and say, Oi, you're not me. You don't belong here. You need to fuck off. You need to go now. Otherwise, I'm going to lose my temper. And eventually, after long enough, after me shouting at them, giving them a bollocking, telling them they don't belong where I am, they went. But you never lose your demons. All you do is you bury them in a concrete box under a load of fucking dirt and you hope they never get out of the concrete box. What I've learned about this disease, shall we call it, just for the sake of this conversation, is... As a recovering alcoholic, recovering drugs, whatever you want to call it, you never get better. You just have this moment where it's less worse than it was. You've always still got those fucking demons knocking at the back of your brain. Wake up, mate. 
Come on, let's go out for a drink. Do a cheeky bump in the loo. All of that's always there. It's always bothering you. Always just uh, poking at you. Don't listen to that demon. Don't listen to those voices. Don't listen to that bullshit. It's not so much about listening. It's about being strong enough to resist. Be strong enough to resist thinking that you need to succumb to some emotion or or to 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 stop your hurt by doing something because you know it will take the pain away blah, blah 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 deal with the fucking pain go through the pain enjoy the pain savor it make it your fucking amuse bouche for the day and then be better than you were the day before and the following day same little tasty snack of pain in the morning and then fucking be better again I watched loads of different people to help me through this. Loads of motivational people. Not this usual money-making motivational bullshit. I watched people like a guy called Wes Watson, who's from is it fucking criminal from America. Hard as fuck, tattooed to the gills. But he talks about being a stronger version of you. He was inspirational. Steve-O was inspirational on his journey. There were so many people who I, I watched and they gave me that motivation. David Goggins, you know, David Goggins wasn't some alcoholic fucking cokehead. He was a just a big fat fatty who fucking said, I'm going to persevere and cut through this and I'm going to get to my goal and I'm going to do it and I'm going to keep doing it and smash it out there. I watched so much of that to, to push my brain into the right position. You need to do that. Rather than sitting on your fucking ass, getting fatter, getting stupider, watching bullshit on Netflix or some other tripe that you watch, feeding your brain full of nonsensical stories and fantasy about, ooh, so you can escape reality. When you watch something real, I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm telling you what I did and what got me through it. And if you're in the same position that I was in, where you feel as fucked as I was and as broken as I was, and you do want an out, then you have to make the right choice. You can't sit there and expect someone to solve your problems. No one will solve your problems. No one will come to your help. No one will be there going, I've got you, I, oh, we've got this, da, 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 da. It's you, motherfucker. You. You have to want this. You have to stick to it. Weirdly, along my way, I had a few different friends come out, and I won't say any names, but they came out and said, hey, Rich, I'm, you know, I'm impressed with your journey, and I think I've got a problem too, mate. I think I've got a similar thing to, you know, what you had or what have. And um, I said, no worries, that's fine. Do you want help? They're like, yeah, sure. So I gave them advice, sat on the phone for a couple of hours, told them what I'd been through, pretty much what I'm doing to you now, but in a longer, more in-depth fucking version. And um, out of all the people that I decided to try and help, support, guide and all of that... <laughs> None of them stuck to it. None of them had the fucking bollocks to actually stick to recovery, stick to being a better version of themselves. Everyone slipped back into the same old ways and went back and said, oh, well, you know, this happened and that happened. And Excuses, motherfucker. Full of them. Everyone is. You're all full of excuses. And I'm saying this because I gave up on making up excuses. I decided recently to set myself a challenge of setting an alarm every half an hour. And I was going to tell myself I was going to do 30 push-ups every half an hour. Do you know why I did that? Because for four years, whilst I've been recovering, I've been telling myself. The first year was just me getting over the fact that I was basically, I was dying inside and didn't know how to function. Then on that first year, I thought, you know what? Now that I've got a year of sobriety in my belt, I'm going to get fit. I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to look after myself more so I can have a better, more fulfilling life for me and my daughter going forwards. Did I do it? Did I fuck? I didn't do shit. I decided instead to throw myself into my career and work really fucking hard and a good amount of money, have established companies and do that because I wanted to achieve that really badly. Fitness can fucking wait, okay? But then, recently, I thought about two months ago, yeah, enough's enough, you fucking excuse-giving cunt. You actually need to do this rather than just talk about it or think about getting healthy. So I decided to set my alarm. Every half an hour, it rings. 
and I do 30 push-ups, whether I like it or not. And do you know why I do that? It's not so I could be some big muscly guy and go, oh, look at my arms. It's to push myself into a position where I do shit I don't want to do. And I know that every half an hour, the shit I don't necessarily want to have to do comes around, whether I like it or not. And do I let it go? Do I look at my phone and go, oh, not this time? Because it, it, it hurt my muscles, my muscles are still sore. Do I? Do I fuck? That type of mentality is the exact type of mentality that you need to consider applying. This light is getting very annoying. To everything you set your mind to. Apply that logic to everything. If you don't want to do it, get it done. If you're afraid of doing it, get it done. If you're trying to avoid something, don't avoid it. It takes a lot of strength to build that mental fortitude to keep doing shit you don't want to do over and over again because you know that ultimately it's the right decision and it will help you. The exact same logic that I wake up and apply every single day when I think, don't drink today, don't do any drugs today. It's not hard. You develop a mental callus and realise that you've got to push yourself through everything that you want to achieve. It's only you can do it. No one else is inside your brain. No one can get inside your brain, control your brain and say, hey, mate, you're going to be sober today. Don't worry, I've got your back. You do it. You make these choices. No one else does. And make the right fucking choices. So if you don't, you're going to be some loser. Some flabby, hungover little loser who thinks he's got a load of mates around him, but actually it's just a bunch of pissheads. All on the same kind of escape uh, journey to, to get away from what really is life. Do you want to be a loser? Or do you want to be a fucking winner? And I can sit here on my ass, smoking a joint in front of you, talking for 17 minutes now and actually tell you I am a winner. I might not be the most good looking person. I certainly haven't got a delicious hairline. You know, I haven't got loads of muscles. I haven't got all the money in the world. But I win every fucking day I wake up because I decide I want to be alive and I want to be a better version of me than I was the day before. So, as I'm nearing 20 minutes of me rambling on at you and most of you probably won't have got this far, so I do apologise for going into it. I've probably gone off subjects and in loads of different tangents. Apologies, okay? <clears throat> Today is my fifth year of sobriety. I am incredibly fucking proud of myself. I will continue this journey until the day I die. I will not consume alcohol and narcotics. Cannabis is not narcotic, it's a fucking medicine. Ever again. I won't. This is my longest journey that I want to be on. I, I want to be sober until my last breath, okay? And not everyone wants that for themselves. I get that. Everyone, like, you know, some people want, might want a fucking glass of Prosecco at the end of their day. Cool, lovely, lovely. But if you're one of the people like me who it isn't a glass of Prosecco, it's, it's a case of six bottles of Prosecco and two bottles of whiskey and a load of grams... If you're that person and you, you hear this message and you think, I don't want to do this anymore. It's killing me. I'm killing me. I know what I'm doing. I'm too afraid to escape. If you want any advice, any support, anything like that, and you are serious and you're not going to waste my motherfucking time, reach out to me. I am here. I am approachable. I am a very nice person, I do listen, I do have good advice, and I have been through a very dark time in my life, and emerged like a fucking falcon, victorious. <sighs> to anyone who is not brave enough to face their demons every day, 
You got this, motherfucker. To the people who fail every day, who try and do it. You got this, motherfucker. To the people who have died because they couldn't stop this happening. I'm sorry we lost you, motherfucker. You should have tried harder. Five years has gone by, and it's actually felt relatively quick. Because I've had the love and support of my daughter, my amazing six-year-old daughter, by my side this whole time. And I do this for me, primarily, but I do this for her because she deserves the best person that I can be. If you want to be the best person for yourself, for your kids, for your family, for whoever, if you want to be that person, be it. Look in the mirror and ask yourself, am I happy with the fucking person who is staring back at me? Because if you're not happy with that person, today is probably that day to try and change it. All right? Here's to five years of sobriety and here's to an eternity of sobriety more from this guy. All right. Probably see you in another five years. <laughs> Bye.